the answer, uh, so I don't know, a complicated question. Um, so no, I'm sort of it. Um, the problem, so I have a problem with CSR officer in a way, I, I think it's important, I think you need one, but, but philosophically I have a problem with it because to me if it, it doesn't start from the top then it's really not gonna work as much as it could, right? So you kinda have to, you kinda have to start at the top and it has to become part of the living soul of the company, right? So I'm sort of the CSR officer, if you will, right? Like I live and breathe this. Now I have people that do little elements of it uh, throughout the company, but you know, so yes and no, right? Um, as far as budget goes, as much as we can, right? So I go back to the board this past year and begged for a little bit more money and we got a little bit more money. So um, it's, it's tough, it's hard to figure this out, right? Like as a company, you're constantly trying to figure out you know, I'm trying to grow top and bottom line. I want to fit CSR in there. I know I have to, but it's tough for the board to hear that sometimes, right? We're gonna have a tough year. I'm still gonna give away money or I'm still gonna give back to the community. I'm still gonna be a good corporate citizen. So I think that's like anything else. It's a line item in the budget that you've got to work through because you have to do it. Um, but we, we have a specific line item for it. Absolutely, right? Yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, right? Like, if you if you bankrupt your company because you you gave away everything, or you you were too corporately responsible, well, that's not good either, right? So, I mean, it has to be a sustainable model, right? Not in the fish sense, but yeah, exactly. Okay, so Bob's being entirely too modest right now. So DGWB has been our partner in this in this journey, right? Um, and they've been the one who've executed our PR in the field. Who, who's worked on this here? Raise, please raise hand. No, just those guys, just three? Come on, there's more. There's lots more in the room. These amazing individuals have done something which I, I couldn't even believe if you told me a year ago. So a year ago, I go to my board, how are you gonna give away a million dollars? And I said, yes, and here's why it's gonna work. We're gonna do some earned advertising and it'll be great for the company and it'll be good for customers. In a normal year, does anyone know what an impression is? An impression is a Nielsen measurement for how many people have seen exposed your company. In a normal year, we get 200, 300 million impressions tops for the entire year. We're in September. We've already hit 2 billion impressions off of less spend because of what, the, because of what these guys have done. And this whole grand finale that he's talking about where we're gonna be in People Magazine, on the Price is Right, and all these kinds of things, right? Like this, this is all built up. So this, this earned advertising has been phenomenally successful to a degree that our company never even understood. And it matters from a bottom line perspective. Customers are now going, taking us seriously, right? We were delisted at Walmart a couple years ago and we just increased our distribution at Walmart which is the number of items that we have on shelf, by 25% this year, which is about $30 million of net sales. So there is an ROI if you do this right. Pick the right partner is a big part of it, right? Um, but anyways, he's being modest is all I'm saying. These guys have run an amazing campaign for us. Very, very good story. <laughs> I'd like to ask one question because we haven't he uh, heard from Anne-Marie. But you know, you have been able to break that uh, mold, if you will, uh, Ross, but not everyone is in that same position. So tell us, how does someone in an advertising or marketing role at their company advocate for or bring up the topic of CSR corporate giving to their management if it hasn't been you know, uh, a topic that's been touched before? Yes. For me? Yes. That's a really great question because most of the time, the topic isn't brought up. Still, people are learning what is corporate social responsibility. They understand cause-related marketing for the most part. They, they understand community engagement. They understand other, other elements of it. But it's fascinating to me when I'm talking to somebody in marketing or advertising about putting together a strategic CSR campaign, and they have no concept on how to do it. And I think it goes back to what you were saying. It comes down from the top. But when it doesn't come down from the top where the corporate leaders are really just focusing on the profit as opposed to people, plant and the profit, it does take people from all different departments 
to bring the subject up. And a great way to do it is really I go back to the business goals, really looking at what the business goals are, and then trying to find a way to solve or enhance or leverage those goals through cause-related marketing, like what, what you were talking about there. Everything that you've done is just absolutely amazing. You know, and, and when you look at the history of CSR, it's a, it really, as we know it today, we can thank, in some ways, American Express. Um, does anybody remember back in the 80s when New York was basically going bankrupt and the Statue of Liberty was closed down? Does anybody remember that time? Some, some of you may, some of you do, okay. Well, it just so happens about that time, there was a senior executive within American Express whose office looked onto the statue, and this person was a patriotic person and just had this brainstorm of an idea, hey, what if we you know, donate, I think it was a penny, to a Statue of Liberty Foundation to fix the statue and open it back up? Well, could we raise some money by doing that to help out? So they created the campaign, and at the very end, not only did they receive a tremendous amount of publicity, positive publicity, they saw a great increase in loyalty with all their stakeholders, and they had a 28% increase in business. It was fabulous, but it, again, it just was from one person understanding some goals, seeing that there's a problem, and bringing the idea up and say, what if? Can we do this? How can we do it? What if? That's that's how you start it, by asking that simple question. I'm super nervous again because, <laughs> where's Bob? Bob's, Bob's not here. Oh, I can talk about whatever I want. But, so there's the marketing reveal. So if I tell you guys, then my marketing team is going to freak out. But no, it's actually uh, a couple months ago, we were starting to think about, okay, what do we do next year? I typed this email, which got me yelled at by my senior vice president of marketing. She was like, what the hell's wrong with you? Don't tell the agency what to do. And I basically wrote, I said, look, I hope that we don't stop doing this. I hope that we continue on this path. And so DJ, DGWB and, and, every, and all the other folks in the marketing decided to continue the campaign. So next year, it's obviously not our 100-year anniversary uh, 101 years of celebration just sounded a little bit lame. So we're doing a campaign we call Seize the Moment. And what we realized this year is that the campaign that we did was a bit, um, mm, you know, we were picking these great organizations and everything like this, but it didn't, it didn't hit home with our core consumer, right? So our consumer, the people that, the people that are your products, 70% 70, 70 of the people that buy tuna fish, women with families, right, who have families to feed. It's a value product and that sort of thing. Um, we've actually named this woman, theoretically, Jennifer in our, in our company. So we said, what does Jennifer need? And if you look at Chicken of the Sea, the reason why the mermaid exists is because it was, uh, the, there was a, I can't think of her name right now. She was on Star Trek. She was like the nurse on Star Trek. She had the little bun in the thing. And Chicken of the Sea back in the 50s and 60s was, the mermaid was there to help you know, the housewife of the 50s and 60s prepare a meal for a family, and this is where, like, tuna melts and all this stuff comes from. But if you, look at, if you look at these women today, if you look at Jennifer today, life's really different in 2014 and 2015, right? Everybody's got, like, dual incomes, right? Like, kids are on iPads, right? Like, it's convenience is all over the place. And we said, what, what does Jennifer need this year, right? Like, of course she wants you to give away some money to a philanthropy or you know, philanthropic thing or you know, make sure that you know, you're doing good corporate things. But we said, well, what she really wants is time. And so we're running a campaign we call Seize the Moment. And some of the elements of that are we're literally going to stop people as they're walking outside of grocery stores and go, how much did you pay for that? Because you've got chicken to see in there. $156, here you go. Here's a check. You know, help these people. We're going to send somebody to college next year. Right? We're going we're gonna to find. I actually think this is really cool. I get touched when I, when I think of this. We're going to find an old couple that wanted to take a trip and never got to, right? We're going to send them on the trip of a lifetime. So we're taking this and trying to make it more personal. It really it kind of touches me, right? Uh, so anyways, our, our next year campaign, seize the moment. We're going to do this. I'm my marketing team, please don't tell everybody because my marketing team will get mad at me, but, but that's what we're doing next year. <laughs>
Well, I find that fascinating that uh, it's a Harvard professor that uh, said this because Harvard has their own Center for Corporate Social Responsibility. Um, and I have to admit that there are some companies that are doing this just for PR. But at the same time, people are so smart nowadays, thanks to the internet. They're able to do a lot of research. They're able to look up your core values and see what you're doing. They're able to ask questions. Uh, and if you really dig into a company and you start looking at what they're doing and what their values are, you can tell if they're doing it just for a PR stunt or if they actually believe what they're doing, if they actually walk the talk. And yes, there are, but in the long run, those companies that are actually just doing it for a PR stunt, those are the companies that are really gonna fail in the long run. And this is why it's important to communicate your values, to share the things that you do in the community on all different elements, to show people that you really do have values, this is what you believe in, and, uh, and I think with that insight, people will really understand where your heart is. Dan, would you like to add to that? Yeah, just a quick thought about uh, talking about if it's coming from a real point and does it make a difference in your bottom line and how it does. And uh, some of you may have heard about the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board. It's something that's actually came out of a, a Harvard graduate and some of their team. They just actually announced Michael Br Bloomberg as their chairman. And they're a nonprofit focused on uh, bringing accountability into the Form 10K. So every public company that reports out every year, investors can look at what's materially responsible for sustainability in that sector. Their work, they just finished working with the transportation sector. They recently were working with the financial sector, but uh, they are working in uh, sectors across all parts of the economy and with the SEC and with FASB to instill this into your Form 10K so you as an individual investor or an investing uh, hedge fund or whatever it may be, understand where the external costs are to that corporation and you can maybe as a shareholder or an investor force them to change their wasteful ways and the way they're impacting the environment. It's going to, I think, uh, open the doors on sustainability and uh, accountability for corporations across the spectrum in North America at a minimum. And it's something that's coming to um, a Form 10K near you in the next probably 24 months. So it's another interesting way that uh, we're addressing the CSR in a slightly different way, but in an open way for every public company. Very good. You know, I did interrupt you, Diane, so uh, maybe if I can just uh, give you two minutes just to, uh, for any closing remarks that you might have just uh, missed as I rudely interrupted you. No, I, um, I get started and then I can't stop. So <laughs> well, you're may, passionate you may not about want what you me do. to start again. Um, only, I guess what I'd, I'd, uh, I'd just like to, to put out there that if there's anyone here who um, would be interested in any in partnerships, particularly with KABC, um, we really do um, deeply uh, value our community commitment and we love working with companies and organizations and uh, businesses that share those values and uh, finding ways where we can do more good in the community. Um, and so I'm, I'm available for anybody that would like to have any conversations regarding that. Um, but just that, I, I guess what I really wanna just at this point say, not so much about, about our, our business, but just what a great forum this is. I think there should be more of these really for organizations and businesses really to come together and, and have these conversations because it's just very enlightening and uh, I've learned something from all of you tonight as well, so thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Diane. Thank you. It's great to see you after so many years. Um, my boss tonight is Mandy, so I know that she is telling me we're a little bit over time, but I also wanna say thank you. Thank you to you, to Mike, and to Rachel. Um, you know, when you work for a government entity, uh, sometimes you spend your lifetime, your career, explaining yourself how we fit into business. But I think at the U.S. Small Business Administration, because we meet with businesses on a daily basis and we are involved with businesses every single day, I think we are a little bit different than other agencies. And, and so we're fortunate in that regard. And, and these are the kinds of partnerships that we are fostering. But I believe working together and asking, being bold, uh, those are the kinds of things that we have to do. And I believe at the end of the day, everyone wins. So I want to thank... Uh, 
your agency once again for inviting us to participate. And I believe they were asking you that we're going to be more. And I, yes. you're the perfect person to say that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> How can you stop? I, I'm it? sorry. I, I, I got to answer this because I just I don't want I don't want to leave on that bad note, right? So not that there was a bad note. Michael <laughs> Michael Porter. Now, I want to answer the Michael Porter question. So I've met Michael Porter. I actually had a really awful debate with him about why I thought the Porter's Five Forces was absolutely an atrocious way to teach business. Different conversation. Let me make it personal, right? I have opened doors for people since a, a kid. My dad taught me to open doors for people, right? Particularly women. I don't know. It's just the way he was born, the way he was made. I opened a door for a woman one time in Georgia. I'll never forget this. In Atlanta, she got irritated and pissed off at me. I don't need the door open for me. And she got mad. She told me not to do it. I still do it. So there's going to be Michael Porters out there. There's going to be people who get irritated at you for doing the right thing. It doesn't mean you don't. So yes, Michael Porter's going to say this. And there are some bad actors out there. But, the, but, but we need to all leave here believing it's still the right thing to do. Sorry. Sorry. Perfect.